this is Kelly DuPont with Probitas Partners here at Super Investor uh, at US in San Francisco. And I'm here with Scott McCormick of Granite Capital Management. Scott, on a panel yesterday, you were talking about uh, investing in frontier markets. So when investors in private equity are looking beyond the BRICS, looking to, you know, sort of the next China or the next India. When you're looking at markets like these, what tells you that you believe a frontier market is perhaps ready for private equity? It's a great question. It's a combination of factors, I would say. First, you, you want to see the right macroeconomic conditions within the country, I think. So you, you want to see... You know, in terms of GDP growth, you want to see you know the right demographics. You want to see some level of political stability. Um, you want the the emerging middle class uh, consumer story. But beyond that, one of the critical things we talked about yesterday was it's about deal flow too. Because just because you have those factors, it doesn't mean there's enough. You can have some private, some public market stuff, and you can have some one-off private market deals. Right. But for there to be depth enough to believe that a fund you know, of any, you know, uh, more than just a couple million dollar fund, that, that there's enough real deal flow there and that it's not, in a lot of these countries that will tend to be families who own the businesses who don't want to let them go, you're going to be a minority with no rights, et cetera. And so understanding that, there, that you can really imagine a portfolio of, you know, somewhat diversified businesses within a country and, and then believe that there's some, you know, viable exit scenario for, for these. Okay. Well, when you're looking at the market right now, which frontier markets do you think are, are beginning to be ripe for private equity? So I think you've, you've seen quite a bit, you know, Sub-Saharan Africa has been a, obviously been a, um, you know, a popular theme, but I think West Africa especially has really seen the market develop. Uh, Nigeria, Ghana, um, within that, you know, a combination of the natural resource play and also, uh, you know, the emerging consumer sector and infrastructure, which is, you know, obviously, you know, very, very needed. Sure. Um, and then within Asia, I, you know, there, um, you know, Indonesia's gotten a lot of focus, and that certainly is is an attractive market where, you're, again, you're seeing this, you know, these funds emerge. Um, and other markets, you know, they tend to be smaller, so it's a little harder, but the, again, the Philippines, I think, is, is starting to be interesting. Mm -hmm. We've never done something there. And Vietnam, which has been a little bit of a laggard, but is, you know, I'm still a strong believer and, and private equity has a very important role to play there. Well, Vietnam had a period sort of unlike some of the others where it was really popular about five years ago and a fair amount of money went into it, but things have slowed down since then as a lot of people are waiting for exits. Are, are you hopeful that uh, Vietnam will, will turn around and generate some exits? Yeah, I'm certainly very hopeful. I would like to see some money come back. Um, yeah, and that's a classic case where I think where the role of government is still pretty critical in in a country, and when the government messes up, you know that as a private equity investor, you and the rest of the economy, you suffer quite a bit. Right. Um, but I do think Vietnam, all, everything else that I talked about in terms of you know dynamism, GDP growth, you know the consumer story, demographics, and the, the youth, and it's all there. And I think it's just it's waiting to, you know, to to reblossom. Um, but it needs, absolutely needs some help from the government to, you know, to get their, uh, okay. get their economics straight. Great. Thanks very much for your insight. My pleasure, Kelly.